respected dear family members, my pranams to you. Many people used to ask me many questions. They used to send me emails and they used to call me over telephone and ask a variety of questions, particularly connected with the Puranas. And uh, earlier days, nearly one year back, I used to, I used to explain all these things through the YouTube lecture. They are already available in the YouTube. But still, many people, in the olden days, people used to ask the question, just like that. They are not interested in knowing it. They wanted, they have got their computer in front of them, or they have got their telephone or mobile phone in front of them. They have got the telephone number. So, just an idea to call and get themselves introduced. And for that purpose, they ask one question. Recently, two days back, one person called me from Dubai and asked how the crows are connected with the human beings. C-R-O-W-S, the crow as a bird. How these crows are connected with the human beings. I did not give any answer. Because just for the sake of asking how a crow connected with a human, human being, that he can understand, I need not tell him about these things. So, merely asking the question, that stage has over. Now, people are asking the question, particularly for giving the answer to those who are challenging Hindu Dharma, those who are denigrating Hindu Dharma, those who are belittling Hindu Dharma, they also ask the question, for which the person who is explaining the Hindu Dharma, does not know how to give the answer, so they send me the email and they call me over telephone for getting the answer. But my request to you, unlike Christianity or Islam, they have got only one book written by one group of people or one person and that is outdated book. The Quran and the Bible, they are not at all meant for Indians. They are meant for the people, primitive people residing formerly in Israel, Egypt and also primitive people who lived in Saudi Arabia. And Prophet Muhammad wanted to convert the very primitive people of Arabian desert to reasonably cultured people. That is why he wrote the book at their standard. Similarly, Jesus' story and Jehovah's story and so on were necessary for converting the people in Israel from the most primitive level to reasonably systematic and uh, 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 a for making them lead a systematic disciplined life. But we who have written the great Vedas, Upanishads and Ramayana, Mahabharata, we need not follow that very primitive crooked uh, way of presenting the primitive, crooked way it is presented. And that type of books are not necessary for Indians. Here we can see people are there at lower level, lower intellectual level, and higher level, still higher level, and perhaps the highest level. For them, for higher level people, you can use the Vedas, where messages are given. No exaggerations are given. No exaggerative stories are given in Vedas. And Upanishads are there where perfectly, perfectly systematic truth about the life are given, applicable for 10,000 years ago and applicable for 10,000 years in the future also or even more. So, whenever stories are told, generally we can see that the stories are told through Puranic stories. 18 books, Mahapuranas and 18 Upapuranas are there. They are all the stories and the stories given in Puranas, the so-called uh, primitive stories given in Bible are entirely different. Bible stories are meant for keeping the pupil under a slave, slavery or slave type of mentality. 
people should be forced to believe that they are sinners. They are sinners and Jesus came here for saving them. If you are not believing Jesus, you will go to hell or you will go to purgatory. Jesus will come and protect you. If you are following some other gods, you will definitely be going permanently to the hell and uh, Jesus will not be protecting. You should only follow Jesus. You should only accept Jesus. You should give up all other beliefs. You should never go to temple. These are all the, is the offshoot of the single biblical books message. message. Similarly, the messages are given in, in Quran also. So, majority of the invasion took place to India primarily aimed at killing the idolaters, those who are worshipping the idol. They were, they were told to be annihilated for going to Allah. Many people may not accept it. If you are going thoroughly through the Quran, you can see even today in the name of religion, the butchering, the slaughtering, the killing and the murdering taking place exclusively for making Allah happy. You just think about it. You can understand that the stories given in Quran that is brought into practice in the life and when such a things are such things are brought into practice in the life what is happening in the Muslim countries will happen and similarly the Inquisition and uh, Saint Francis Xavier killed uh, thousands of Hindus as per the advice of Bible those who are worshipping other gods should be killed your hand should raise to kill the idol worshippers. You should follow only me. I am your God. You should not have any other God. If you are worshipping any other God, you will be revenged for that. You will be treated accordingly for that. And you will be sent to fire. You will be sent to ocean. You will be sent to docks. These are all the messages given in, given in Quran. What I am telling is directly from Bible and Quran. Please don't think that when I am exaggerating, I do not have any idea. Whatever I told now, I have uploaded in YouTube. You just to go through, go through that one in English and Malayalam. I have given reading the Bible, not merely thinking and and supposing or imagining that these things are available in the Bible. I have read, quoted the number of chapter and quoted the stanza and I have uploaded. It is not, it need not be repeated again. So such a type of messages are not given in Puranas. Puranas are meant exclusively for con conveying the messages for an individual. They can accept it or they can reject it. And nothing uh, against the will of the individual is given in the Puranas. You need not blindly follow Puranas. Puranas are not histories. But historical stories may be there. Historical stories with exaggeration will be there, are there. And the exaggerations are included in the in the Puranic stories exclusively because to inform the people that they are not histories, they are stories. Thus exaggerations are incorporated in that one. So whenever you are asking the questions connected with the Puranas, the Puranic stories may be connected with the king stories about the kings. It can be the stories connected with a devotee, a bhakta, it can be story of a farmer. Sometimes even it can be a story of an animal, an animal like elephant. And it can also be the story of the natural force. What is meant by natural force? Say for example, Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma and Lord Vishnu. Remember, just like Allah, Allah who never existed here in the world. It's not a human being. Allah who does not have body structure. Yehovah is not a human being. Yehovah does not have the body structure, shape, size, nothing. Purely imaginary figure. Whereas Prophet Muhammad is a historical figure. 
Jesus Christ is a historical figure. Like that, you can see Lord Krishna is a historical figure, Lord Rama is a historical figure, whereas Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, they are not historical figures, they are imaginary figures. And very specifically, Lord Vishnu is the symbolic presentation of the of the natural force meant for sustaining the life on the surface of the globe here. So, Stiti, Srishti is done by Brahma and there is no an, not an individual called Brahma. And to the surprise, you can see Brahma is the creator. In Quran and also in Bible and also in the ancient text of Jews, Brahma, the same word is used in a different way, Ibrahim, Abraham, Abraham. So, Brahma and Abraham. Wife of Brahma is Saraswati, wife of uh, Ibrahim is Sara. Sara is Saraswati short form. Saraswati Sara. Ibrahim Brahma. So you see the word how they are connected. So Indian Puranic books existed here for 3000-4000 years ago. Whereas Bible was written in 273 and the cross got accepted after 4th century AD. And similarly, Quran written 1250 years ago. Before that also our Puranas existed. So the story of Brahma, it is the story of Brahma, it is the story of Vishnu, it is the story of Shiva. If you are asking a logical, rational or scientific question about Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwar, how Lord Brahma said, I am greater than Vishnu. How Lord Vishnu said, I am greater than Shiva. How the Lord Shiva said, how Lord Shiva said, I am the greatest among all these things. These are all exclusively the stories to inform the readers that the force of creation is superior to other. That is according to some group of people. Other people think that the force of sustainment of the nature that is superior to other forces. Some other people say that when the force of survival and annihilation that is superior to other group of people who believe that Lord Vishnu is the greater force. So people got separated. Some people followed strictly Lord Shiva. They thought that one they will be protected by Lord Shiva if they worship only Lord Shiva. They, they are known later as Shaivite. Those who worshipped only Lord Vishnu, they are known as Vaishnavites. Unfortunately or fortunately there is no followers for Brahma because he is the creator of creators. So people thought that they need not create another God for Brahma, another system for Lord Brahma. So, the Shaivite gave importance to Shaiva uh, method of uh, worship and uh, Vaishnavites gave importance to Vishnu's method. But Vishnu and Shiva and Brahma, similarly Saraswati, Lakshmi and Parvati are not like uh, the Christian gods. Why I say Christian god here? They got Saint Francis, Saint Joseph. They are all really god men, god men. In Malayalam we say Aldevangal. Till their last breath, they were human beings. They have converted other people into Christianity as directed by the Bible. So later on, for the service rendered by Saint Joseph, Saint Francis, Saint Alphonsa, the service rendered for the Christian community in way of converting the ordinary people into Christianity as told by Bible, they were all sanctified and benedicted from Vatican by another sinner, Pope. So one sinner after the death got sanctified and sanctified by another sinner who is living in Vatican. So here if you are analyzing the logical way, this sinner who got benedicted, this sinner who became the saint, from that day onwards, he will become the broker between you and God. He will become the broker for talking to you just like an advocate in a court. Whereas in India, 
In the Puranas, there is no question of any middleman or brokers in between. You can directly pray to the God. So, how to pray, why to pray, when to pray, what is the effect of prayer, what is the effect of services, what is the effect of following Dharma, what is the result and the reward of uh, following a compassionate mind, what is the benefit derived out of following the path of Dharma, Satyam, Niti, Nyaya, all these positive qualities and also all the negative qualities if you follow, how you will be rewarded or punished. If you follow positive qualities, how you will be rewarded. If you follow negative qualities, how you will be punished. All these are explained as stories. Now you just think about a movie. Movie, Karnataka movie or Malayalam movie, any movie you think about it. There will be a message in that movie. That movie need not be a history. That movie will be a part of story or fully a, a historical story in which the ultimate message is to convey you the information that if you live like the hero, whatever experience that hero had, you will also be having partly or fully the same experience. And suppose you are becoming a villain in the movie and also a villain in the life. Whatever that villain, villain had to face in that movie, you will also partly or completely be facing the same thing. So, the ultimate aim of a movie is to convey you the message of good and bad exactly like that, exactly like that. The aim of a Purana is to convey you the message of good and bad and in which telling merely the story of an individual, it will not be good. So, one part, the stories of the kings are told. Why we are taking generally the stories of the kings, you know? They are the most complicated life managers in the world. An individual, he need manage only himself. A family member, he has to manage the whole family. A social leader, he has to manage the society. And if you think about a village, village Gramadhiba, the village head, he has to manage the whole village. And if you are taking a Janabada, a state, that Janabada Raja has to manage the whole Janavada and if you are taking a king, he has to manage the whole country. If you are taking the case of an emperor, he has to uh, control many countries. So every minute his mind and intellect is under full stress and strain. So the stories of the kings are taught exclusively not to inform you the historical facts. Historical facts may also be there. But to inform you through Puranas, I am not talking about Idihasa, I am not talking about uh, Mahabharata or Ramayana. I am talking exclusively about 18 Puranas and 18 Puranas to inform you that those stories just like we are seeing a movie today, just like we are listening the stories in our academic books, just like uh, many stories are taught in MBA and also at higher levels, just like uh, the story written in a poetry, stories written as a prose, stories written as a novel, are taught exclusively for getting the experiential knowledge. Experiential knowledge, uh, we have to face, we have to see, we have to look into the, and we have to analyze, we have to estimate, uh, and we need not justify these stories. What I meant by need not justify, we should never argue with anybody for justifying that the stories are the real history of the life. It is not at all history. Maybe historical facts are there as I used to tell and I told many times now. The stories are meant for conveying you a particular message. Say for example, in Mahabhagavada, Gajendra Moksha story is there. 
remember that there cannot be an elephant, namely Gajendra. The Gajendra word itself means that the king of the elephants. There also the king comes. So Gajendra got trapped by a crocodile. He struggled continuously. He could not survive himself. Finally he submitted himself to the divine power and the divine power protected him from the crocodile. This is a story. But the story gives you a fantastic message that even if you are a king, even if you are a powerful individual, even if you have got many followers, or even if you are a wise man, sometimes you may also get trapped anywhere or somewhere you may get trapped. And even if you have got muscle power, even if you have got financial power, all the followers of the, uh, the power of the followers, sometimes you may get yourself isolated and others may give up. At that time, you have got to, to surrender yourself to the divine power. So this is an unconditional bhakti, devotion, demonstrating story. And similarly, you see any other story in Puranas, the story of a merchant will be there, story of a king will be there, story of a farmer will be there, and the story of a rishi will be there, and the story of a, the natural force like a creation, the story of Vidya, the story of prosperity, story of Vidya means knowledge, a knowledgeable individual, whether he is superior or a rich individual whether he is superior, who is superior. Under such a situation, the story will go as the discussion between Saraswati and Lakshmi, Goddess Saraswati and Goddess Lakshmi. Just to prove or show through story whether the force or power of knowledge is superior, whether the Jnana Shakti is superior or whether the Ichha Shakti of Lakshmi, whether that is superior. So when there is a story between Saraswati and Parvati, it does not mean that there existed two people, two, uh, two ladies like Saraswati or Lakshmi. They are all symbolic presentation. As I told you, just like Jehovah is an imaginary figure. There never existed a Jehovah at all. It's only in the mind. Similarly, Allah never existed. Whatever people argue or try to convince others, there is no individual like Allah. Just like that, there is no individual like Trimurtis. They are all in our glorious and arbitrary Sankalpa. Trimurti Sankalpa, Trishakti Sankalpa. So to prove to an ordinary man, it is the Jnana Shakti which is superior to Icha Shakti. It is the Jnana Shakti which is superior to the muscle power Kriya Shakti. It is the Jnana Shakti Saraswati Goddess is superior to the, the Goddess of Prosperity. Even if you have got millions and millions of dollars, remember that. Remember that another person has got high level of education. That person will be superior to the rich person. That person will be superior to the person who has got extremely high level of muscle power. So muscle power sometimes demonstrated through Parvati. The power of the richness or money is sometimes demonstrated through Lakshmi. The power of knowledge sometimes in the stories uh, are explained through Saraswati. The power of creation in the world sometimes explained through a story in which Lord Brahma is the the power of the natural force who is responsible or what is responsible for the survival of all living beings and non-living beings that is sometimes uh, explained and demonstrated through Mahavishnu, through Mahavishnu symbolically represented. So the lot of annihilation destruction needed for const reconstruction. The material once used after its uh, Disposal should be used for the creation. Just like we have got nitrogen cycle, we have got hydrogen cycle, water cycle, carbon dioxide cycle and so on. 
where the material is continuously reutilized. In the Trimurti Sangalpam also, creation takes place after some time, initially uh, after a long period of survival will be taking place. After that annihilation, destruction will be taking place. The materials remaining after destruction will be reused for the creation. So it is the life cycle shown through Trimurti Sankalpa. The only difference is that for creation, knowledge is needed. Saraswati is accompanied with the Brahma. For the maintenance, prosperity is needed. So Narayana Mahavishnu has got a companion like Lakshmi. And you can see, you can see the force of destruction, where force is, power is also needed. Merely small water flow will not destroy anything. Powerful water flow only will be destroyed. Small wind when you are uh, enjoying under the fan will not destroy anything. But the tornado, the tempest, the cyclone, and or the hurricane with the full force that will be having the destructive power. Ordinary river, river will never destroy anything whereas a tsunami can destroy many things. A small lamb, that fire present in that will not destroy anything but the forest fire that will be destroying many things. So merely having a Shiva is not enough. With the Lord Shiva, Parvati is also needed. Shiva Shakti Ayukto. With the Narayana, Lakshmi is also needed. With the Brahma, knowledge, power is also needed as Saraswati. This is demonstrated through the stories in Puranas. Uh, considering Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, Saraswati, Lakshmi, Parvati as the power, the deities or gods and goddesses and the stories of sages and rishis, the stories of kings and uh, their family members, the stories of ordinary farmers and other things. Very rarely sometimes in Puranas, stories of animals will also be coming in that one. So all these stories have got uh, only one purpose, only one purpose. That purpose is to convey you the positive qualities of the life, positive uh, characters of the life, positive attitude of the life, positive behavior of the life, positive mind of the life, so that what are the things you can enjoy if you have got a positive quality. And also to demonstrate the punishment or the, or the negatives that you will have to face if you are following the negative pathway. So remember that the negatives are demonstrated to keep you away from the negatives through the stories. Positives are explained as the stories to make you come to the positive in the life. If you behave positively, what are the benefits you will be getting? If you behave negatively, what are the negatives you will be getting? That is also explained as Pabam and Punyam, sin or virtue. But remember that Pabam and Punyam explained in Puranas are entirely different from the Pabam and Punyam, sin and virtue given in Bible and Quran. In Bible and Quran, all these messages are used for converting the pupil from other legion to their legion and partly for refining their own pupil. So the stories given in, in Bible and the stories given in, in, in Quran are for making the pupil, primarily aimed at making the pupil to either adhere with the God, Jehovah or Jesus, forcing the pupil to stay with Allah or Prophet Muhammad. So they are partly threatened and a fear psychosis is created. That is why Christians and Muslims always used to say they are God-fearing people. So they create a fear. But in India, we always say, always say Ishwara Bhatta. We are devotees, not God-fearing people. We need not be afraid of God. Why some people are afraid of policemen? Because they are the cheaters and frauds and the thieves. Thieves should always be afraid of the policemen. 
Whereas for Hindus, they are not doing anything negative. So they need not be afraid of the so-called gods. The god will not be punishing the pupil if the pupil are not staying with the god. It is, the god is not a, a master and pupil are not the servant. If the servant is not staying with the master, the master will get angry and punish. That is the approach given in Bible and Quran. Whereas in India, that approach itself is not the that the pupil can worship the God. Pupil can can also need not worship the God. The God is not bothered whether you are worshiping the God or not. So in India, God is not a Zaminda, God is not a terrorist. In India, God is not the not the king, God is not the uh, real work, workers head to get the work done for him and he is not the manager and he is not the policeman and he is not an advocate and the God will not be evaluating your quality after your death. God does not have any responsibility like it is the nature which gives you the punishment for your bad deeds and also it is the nature which gives you good thing for your good deeds. That is what is called for every good action. There is an equal and opposite good reaction. For every bad action, there is an equal and opposite bad reaction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction to be experienced by the actor. That is what is mentioned in Hindu Dharma. That is exclusively explained in the Puranas. So, Puranas are not histories, historical facts may be there in Puranas, but Puranas are, are aimed at informing you what exactly uh, should be the pathway for you to live in this world. Thank you very much. My pronouns to you.